Thank you. Uh, like others, I'm very honored to be here. It's a distinguished group. Uh, I had no expectation of, of joining you. So it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I thank the Internet Society, and I thank my nominators, express my appreciation for that. Uh, my love affair with computing, which became after a while a love affair with networking, uh, began in the middle 60s when I was a graduate student in business at Stanford. And someone said, you know, there's something going on on the west side of campus having to do with computers. And so I wandered over there and, and sort of poked around and there was an IBM 7090 and a Burroughs B5500 and somebody said, you know, you ought to take a programming course. It might be useful. Well, it was certainly interesting. I'm not sure how useful it was, but, but those were heady days. Uh, Fortran, uh, John Bacchus was at the Almaden Lab, which was just down the road, and uh, so there was, a, there was sort of something in the air about it that, that gathered me, and when I became uh, subsequently uh, involved with uh, computing at Stanford, uh, it, it just has carried forward, and uh, Stanford's leading position in computing uh, continues to this day and is based on, on uh, uh, an awful lot of talent and an awful lot of energy. So I certainly owe a lot to the many people I worked with at Stanford. One of the skill sets that I have brought to my career is an appreciation for team building, which is also in the academic environment called collaboration. And interestingly enough, and I don't say this in a negative fashion, but if you analyze a little bit about uh, where did this multi-stakeholder uh, term come from, you, you won't find any of it in the early days of ICANN. When the initial board and I put ICANN together and we had a set of bylaws and we set off to chase our technical coordination uh, mission, uh, there wasn't, nobody talked about multi-stakeholders. In fact, we talked about support organizations and, and other sort of code words for trying to get people to pull together was basically what it was all about. So really, if you parse multi-stakeholderism, you can find a trail back to academic collaboration and many other things. I need to be brief because uh, everybody has to have a chance to talk tonight. And, Mo many of you have already touched on important themes uh, in your careers that are also important in, in my career. Uh, one of the things I'd like to close with is to point out that many of us who go back a while in the internet uh, have viewed it, our role, as a nurturing role. There, there are quite a number of people in this room that have played very prominent roles in nurturing uh, the evolution, growth, and development of the, of the Internet. What's going on right now, I think, is that we're, we need to recognize that we're moving out of an era of nurturing. And I don't want to be dismissive at all of the en enormous value of the efforts, the grassroots efforts that are being made around the world that are still in a nurturing stage. But for those of us who are still working in and dealing with the, the really major challenges about the future of, of the Internet, we have to recognize that we're moving in into an era of, of sustaining, sustaining the Internet. And that requires that we look a little bit down inside ourselves and, and, and ask a question about, well, how did we get here? And, and that, of course, I could talk all evening, and many of you could as well. But let me suggest to you that that the values that are rampant in this room, the values that got us where we are, uh, still have a utility to service in the future as we hand off the stewardship roles that we have had to our, to our successors in leadership. And some of these things you'll recognize as coming out of an academic and academic environment that, but, and, and potentially uh, a, a nonprofit environment. Many people are concerned that the profit motive is ruining the Internet. I think we have to, we have to really look at that. This, it's different strokes for different folks. We absolutely could not have the Internet we have today without private investment and private enterprise. We couldn't have the Internet we have today without the open uh, and free Internet that we incubated on university campuses. We have to, we have, to have both. But to go back very briefly to the notion of values, uh, I've always thought, as I get into the ending part and rather than the beginning part of my career, that 
that I've been aided by the notion of a respect uh, for learning and research and scholarship. Parallel and related to that is the notion of an expectation of intellectual rigor and competence in what we do. The world today has too many people who are taking a free ride on the work of others and somehow or other are getting away with not being very good at what they do. We can't afford to have any of that in the internet and in internet leadership. Thirdly, we really need the same bias for action that got us where we are. We have Eric telling us he got captured as a graduate student to do send mail. There are parallel stories in the whole room. So we, we need, we need to, to say to ourselves, you know, after you've got covered the, the learning part and the competence part, go out and use it. And, and finally, uh, we have to continue to love what we do and have fun. Thank you.